Good morning, Moira. Thank you so much for being here today on Seasons of Motherhood series. It is a joy. People could be watching it any time of day, could they? Yes, they could. Any time of day they can. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. No, it's a joy to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Very, very nice much appreciate it. You. Yes. yes. This isn't my wheelhouse. So if I do something <laughs> inappropriate, just all it out. Well, I am learning as I go to. It's all a learning curve. We never stop learning, Moira. For those of you who aren't familiar with Moira, um, Moira is a Canadian TV personality and you have approximately 50 years of broadcast experience, I believe. And I started when I was 17. Yeah. So your whole career has been just highlight after highlight, unique after unique, different experiences that God has led you to. And one of the ones I'll highlight too is just the fact that you have been on the longest running Canadian Christian broadcasting company, 100 Huntley Street, for many, many years, which included hosting and also with Full Circle. You have been around a lot and done so many beautiful things and you have encouraged Canadians for so many years and what a blessing you have been to living room after living room from phone call on the prayer lines uh, for years and years, Moira. What a blessing. It, it, it was and thank you. Um, you need to know, but none of those opportunities were ones that I sought. Mm -hmm. God called me surprised mm -hmm. me with all of them and he also called me to leave them yes at various times yes so it's been his plan all his surprise mm -hmm. all the way mm -hmm. well i love how you have accepted those opportunities and uh and also been very quick to listen to what god is calling you to do whether to stay or to go and I think one of those seasons when I first met you, I was teaching JK and SK at a Christian school. And that's where I first met you. And I was teaching your son, who is now 20, 30. He just turned 30. 30. And so, I believe at that time I was at home. Right. Yeah. It was part of the 12 year back home, leaving the career I loved. Right. Um, to be a full-time mom and right. homemaker. <laughs> well, it was a privilege to meet you so early on, and I've had the honor to know you and be encouraged by you and mentored by you for so many years. You've walked me through lots of seasons, and I have so many memories of us sitting at Swiss Chalet, having a coffee, catching up after one of your tapings, and we would just try to sneak in a quick lunch or a coffee, and all of those moments, and being in your kitchen or your living room. You spoil me. Every time I come over, you spoil me. I just love being in your presence. So thank you for always you doing know, that. You know, a really important point that in the busyness of trying to balance everything, mm. uh, friends is near the top of the list of what goes. And we do need to encourage one another. Yes, we do. It makes such a difference. Yes. It's yes. easy to feel whatever the stress, whatever the weight you're carrying, that you're all alone in it. Right. And oh no, we have so much in common. Yes, yes. Well, you were so gracious to offer to write a blog post for the Seasons of Motherhood series very early on when I was just getting things rolling. And you wrote a post called Musings in Musings on Motherhood. And you know what I love about the beginning of your blog? I just want to read this little part for you. You quote from Call the Midwife. I loved watching Call the Midwife. So you say, each was as ordinary and magical as the sunrise, as familiar and different as the breaking day. The wonder of childbirth is celebrated in this quote from the British TV series called Call the Midwife. Even when the producers employ the prosthetic newborn in delivery, I tear up at the miracle, so did I. Uh, but the poetic reflection, you say, in many ways describes the whole journey of motherhood and the uniqueness of each treasure entrusted to our loving care. However, the mystique and unflinching gratitude has been sorely tested in my venture, parenting, yours and mine, we are tested. But I love how you talk about the gift of children that we are entrusted to, just as you open up your blog. It's a wonderful blog. So thank you for sharing that. Wow. Yeah, thank you. You know, I just read a scripture we all know so well, and I'm crazy about the Passion Translation. I don't know if everyone's discovered it. But Psalm 127, verse 3, children are God's love gift. Mm. They are heaven's generous reward. 
Mm. Literally driving to Crossroads one morning, having escaped the mayhem. And that word came into my head, reward. Mm. Oh yeah, the scripture says, they're God's reward. Yeah. I was, you know, <laughs> in the process of trying to juggle everything mm -hmm. and it's just like a two by four. Moira, this is your reward. Don't squander right. it. Right. Watch how you're spending your time. That's convicting. <laughs> Came to mind. Yes. I think we all experience that as moms when we are entering into the world of motherhood and perhaps you have transitioned from work life into home life. And for you, I know that that was a transition that happened a little bit later in life, meeting uh, your husband, Richard, a little bit later and having children. But however, a lot of women today are having children much later and starting families mm -hmm. a little bit later. So a lot of women are transitioning from being in the workforce, being a leader, into being a leader in the home in a brand new way. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Yes. I, you know, I reread the blog. What was that, three years ago or? I don't 2020, know. 2021. Okay. Yeah. And um, I thought I, I came across feeling a, a significant amount of guilt, which just comes with a package. What mother isn't at some point, if not through the duration, on a guilt trip? So I hope we can dispel some of that. But the, just a few things that I think need to frame whatever I've shared. First of all, I have had the blessing for 34 years of a fully invested, enthusiastic co-parent in my mm -hmm. husband, Richard. Mm -hmm. I always say he was a better mom than me. <laughs> he just, you know, he was the second of seven children and, uh, you know, changed most of their diapers and just, we have, uh, we don't have grandchildren as yet. Our mm -hmm. children are 30 and uh, 31. Mm -hmm. and I literally have to stop him from accosting strangers' children <laughs> on the street because he just <laughs> loves them so much. He just wants, where are you going? You know, anyway, we don't rub that in with the kids. God's timing set a bad example. We married oh, at 35 time. and 38, you know. Yeah. Richard became a father at 40. Um, I think it's important to say, uh, so that's a nod to single moms. Wow, I, I what a challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I'll just leave it there. Yeah. My heart goes mm -hmm. out to you. The other thing is we could afford for me not to be working mm -hmm. for that 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, some people don't have the choice right. not to be trying to live in two worlds. Right. And that is hard. And listen, work-life balance, I am not the expert. <laughs> I'm going through boxes, piles, papers, etc. I mean, I hope I live long enough, seriously, to get through it all. That's how bad it is. <laughs> But I found this. I was a cover girl once. This was the last issue of Salvation Army, Catherine Please. Magazine. Do you see the title here? It's here. Catherine, learning, learning to be. To be. Mm. Being always precedes doing. Do you know the year of this article? 2003. Really? So this was me fessing up before wow. I was called back to full time daily. National Christian TV, 100 mm -hmm. Huntley Street, mm -hmm. and Full Circle Weekly. Right. So um, I would get overloaded all over again mm -hmm. and have to make that decision that there was too much on my plate. Those were the days where your kindergartner, Sandy, mm -hmm. would come home from school now in late public school, early high school, and say, is there going to be dinner tonight? <laughs> Mom probably had to read one or two books before tomorrow morning. Yes. And on and on. Yeah. Yeah. Me. So just those qualifiers that uh, even now, it sort of, I don't use the R word, retired. I don't mm -hmm. use that. Mm -hmm. um, but we are in a much gentler season. And that it's still... Um, Conscious choices to stay in the unforced rhythms of grace. Wow, I love that. That's Eugene Peterson, the message translation, uh, Matthew 11, 20 to mm. 30. The unforced rhythms of grace. For me, the litmus test was a Galatians 5, 22. Mm. Are my children in my home where I set the atmosphere? Dad may be the spiritual head, but 
I set the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, are they seeing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or I asked Davey for one word for the, the motherhood season. He said, pandemonium. <laughs> that was his <just> one word. <laughs> so it was a little like a filling station. Like we were just in and out and everybody going in different directions. It was busy. It was busy. It was busy. There's good busy. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some things that have to be preserved. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone would agree in this increasingly frenetic culture with all of the complexities today right. around morals and values and priorities. Right. right. Um, we need to know our children. We need yes. to be in touch with them. Right. Family meals. It, I just think it's one of the things that gets lost. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I put it in this blog. Oh, and I should have had that stat for you. It's awful. <laughs> About the families, the percentage of families that are actually under the same roof at dinner time, mm -hmm. and what a shocking few actually sit at a table together. Right. You know what they do, they load their plate and they go to their separate corners and their devices. Right. Instead of, how was your day? I know. And where did you see Aslan on the move today? That right. was one of the things we tried to do on a regular basis. Where did you see God at work today? And then when they're little, the answers are priceless. You've got to write them down. So, yeah, I was going to say, uh, you have to write those down for sure. <laughs> but it's it's a treasure. Mm -hmm. And it keeps, it keeps God in the center. Mm -hmm. And it keeps us radar up to how are you really doing yes keeps the pulse you're uh the pulse is you know you're able to like you said connect with your kids and i remember early on before we even had kids there was a couple at our church that um she actually she's our piano teacher still and she had said very specifically just what you said family dinners family dinners and they she had all these really cute creative things that she used to do with her kids and and I've always loved that. I've always loved pulling people around the dinner table. My kids will know that. And they would roll their eyes. But I tried to make it, you know, exciting. So we play little games after. I'd come up with funny little things. Um, and then kitchen cleanup, my kids will say, they always put the music on. And Duncan and I would sometimes, not all the time, we would sit down and they would clear as if it was like a restaurant. And they'd put the music on. And sometimes you just have to do something fun to shake it up. But as you said, though, when seasons change, it's harder and harder to keep connected. And I know that you felt that. And I, what was that major hinge for you that helped you cross over to being at home for that 12 year period? What was that, there was there that kind of a one moment, was, the, was it the one in the car when you felt like you, you know, heard God speak specifically that, through that verse or was it a series of things? that just said, okay, you know what? Now's the time, I'm, I'm gonna go home. Uh, well, uh, you know, it did happen twice, but the, uh, you know, the second time actually, it was just leaving one program. So that mm -hmm. instead, preparing for two is preparing for one. Mm -hmm. And I've done that. So I, I mean, it was, I, you know, you get used to hearing, this, instead of resisting the signals, mm -hmm. you know, responding with God. Mm -hmm. um, I was terrible when I first, left daily national Christian TV, Huntley Street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, part of it was to whom much is given, much will be required for their responsibility is greater. That had impacted me as a single new believer. Right. And I just didn't see the value. Forgive me, this is pretty open and honest. <laughs> it's okay. Of, um, of pouring my gifts and all God had allowed me to experience in my life. Mm -hmm. two little souls when thousands were perishing and I could have some influence mm -hmm. daily with them. Right. And so it was a math thing for me. Two versus thousands. Right. Um, at really with that goal, keep in mind, I never sought a broadcast career. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a social worker. <laughs> I wanted to make people happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so when I came home, um, I know twice I lost it. I said to my dear little Catherine at three, mommy's gonna go back to work. No, mommy, don't go back to work. Really? Oh yeah, there oh, were yeah. Two, only twice. 
Mm -hmm. but they were definite moments of overwhelm. Mm -hmm. I think anyone who's made that transition knows that when you are in a place that you're gifted for, mm -hmm. you make investment and you see results. Right. Homemaking, which hadn't been happening at our home, we all lived under that roof, but nobody was making it a home. Right. Um, it, it truly, it was a landing strip. Uh, it, you just do, it's maintenance. It, you're doing the same thing over and over. There isn't the same sense of accomplishment or reward. I found it one of the loneliest seasons of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually I found the book that I referred to in the blog, No More Lone Ranger Mom, Donna Parto. Oh yeah, you did mention that one. Yeah. I mean, she was, she was, uh, had a stellar career, author of homemade business. Um, but she discovered that the key to her survival was a mother, mummy network. Mm -hmm. a mummy yeah, network. Literally. So actually, and mm -hmm. I had forgotten the exact titles, uh, to our extroverted, to our introverted, but you know, she said she was at the playground and there were, uh, something like six kids and seven moms and she thought well at least one of us could be at home having a nap you know <laughs> do the math. Yeah. come on find our efforts here teamwork makes the dream work yeah. so it's take charge mom the meticulous mom the fun mom and the attentive mom mm. each one has kind of a different vibe and gifting mm -hmm. yep. and uh, so you know the fun mom is going to take all the kids into the pool <laughs> because she can be sure that the meticulous mom has zero interest in being in the pool. <laughs> yeah. She will help you measure for your curtains in the kitchen. And, yeah. you know, it's mm -hmm. it was a wonderful, wonderful book. Yeah. Wonderful Sounds lovely. concept. Um, and I had a woman named Maud from Ireland. She went back to Ireland. What a gift. Mm. She knocked on my door. We didn't know each other that well. But I say in the blog, she drove me around mm -hmm. to the already cased out preschool programs for moms and kids. And um, that was a connector that was, you know, um, cabin fever. Yes. Boy, you take the kids, you get to have coffee with another mom. Yes. And I think I talk more about that in the blog. Well, I understand. I completely. There was a, a moment, uh, Sandy. I mean, lots of things helped. Mm -hmm. um, and I talk about them in the blog. Yeah, you do. People can go right to the blog to read the details. But um, if you were to give any sort of encouragement to a mom that is in that season right now where she's just making that decision about, I think it's time for me to come home. And there's no, no time frame on it, but maybe it's just making that decision. What encouragement would you share with her today? You know, as recently as this week, the Lord bless me down to my toenails. <laughs> I was going through mail. Mm -hmm. Welcome back mail to Huntley Street after being away for 12 years. Mm -hmm. So mail from 2006, 2007, mostly 2006. And you might think that leaving the profession, the job, the position, that you love, mm. that satisfies, that is rewarding, mm. is um, is really tough, and and it probably will be initially. Mm -hmm. But I'm reading this mail and realizing I didn't lose ground. Mm. I was enriched through what God called me to do. That's beautiful and enlarged. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, David Maines, my boss and the mm -hmm. president and CEO then of Crossroads, said, Moira, you've hit your stride. Wow. He looked surprised. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was too. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but that's a God thing. It is a God thing because that yeah. wasn't planned. That was part of what he wanted to do in you. <laughs> but... Mm -hmm. So if it has to go on the back burner, that 12 years went like that. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you've heard it say that the days are long, but the years mm. are quick. They go so yeah. fast. I understand and that more than ever. Mm -hmm. Maybe the biggest gift was a gift for Christmas, um, maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm not sure. I think it changed my son's attitude toward his mother. He spent hours and hours, he got whatever equipment was needed to see those little, little Sony tapes. Mm -hmm. Hours and hours and hours, the door was closed at, on his bedroom. And he made an hour and a half collage of their early childhood. Really? a 1990 to 94 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just cried. Of course. And uh, some of that video, I don't think I'd even viewed, but it was a celebration yeah. of the adventure we had together. Mm -hmm. And it was God saying to me, Moira, this is what you would have missed. It's so true. Moira, that is so beautiful. I think that is the perfect place for us to to almost end our conversation and let women absorb what you just said. Could I just about the guilt trip? Oh, about the guilt trip. That because happens. I've got young nieces who are coming to me and they're lovely women and lovely mothers and I think, "Oh, Lord, they're they're beating themselves up over nothing." So let me just say, I'll never forget the day Richard and I were in a coffee shop and he said, there's a new mom. I said, how do you know? He said, everything's new and she's got everything with her. Yeah. Yes. So there was the brand new stroller. Yes. Things hanging off it. The brand new diaper bag and all the bells and whistles. And Sandy, you know, as a mother of five, uh, all those things, <laughs> they don't last. No. <laughs> and so there's this terrible performance pressure because mm -hmm. uh, we haven't been moms before and we're not right. sure if they'll break. And, you know, it just one day, one of my neighbors, semi, no, she was retired. Uh, we were in a retired, semi retired and retired neighborhood in Oakville. Mm -hmm. And you want to know everybody else's townhouse was immaculate <laughs> and styled and lovely. And June came to my door, and I don't know why she wanted to come in, but I just looked around and thought, <laughs> the Not floor. today. I've got <laughs> two schoolers, and it's just mayhem in here. And so I'm a little uncomfortable, but I invited her in. And mm -hmm. do you know I get emotional thinking about it? Oh. She literally sighed with regret. Really? Looking at my mess and the kids, and, and she said, Oh, I wish I'd relaxed more wow. as a mom and just got down on the floor mm -hmm. and played with the kids. She said, wow. we waxed our floors every week and the kids were gift wrapped at all times. Like, <laughs> oh dear. You know, it yeah. was image mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. That's In exhausting. That is exhausting. It's exhausting. And it's already exhausting being a mom, but then we're adding all these different pressures and like you said, it's our presence. And like what Davey did for you, he know he went back to the memories, those all those core memories. He put those together, and that's what he knows. That's what created his childhood and who he is as a young man today. It's not the wax floors, and it's not the dusting. And yes, we have to do those things, but where are our priorities? And I think you've said it so perfectly because they to are enjoy. our priorities. Gail McDonald said this, and I just pre but just preface it with Romans 12 and 2, the Phillips translation says, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Mm -hmm. Like, who are we trying to impress? Mm -hmm. Here are our little rewards. The best thing we can do is enjoy them. Yes. It's a hard world out there. Yes. We want to have light and life and mm -hmm. delight and love. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Gail McDonald in high calling, high privilege, said a woman makes an enormous leap forward in her spiritual development mm -hmm. when she determines that being useful is more important than being noticed that's beautiful mm -hmm. i know there's a whole identity significance mm -hmm. being seen mm -hmm. you know what your kids will tell you not when they're pulling on your pant leg yeah <laughs> down the road down the they road will tell you that your investment shaped them, mm -hmm. that what you modeled impacted who they are today. 
yeah, that's you actually say that right at the end of your blog, you talk about that you quoted children have never been very good at listening to their elders, but they have never failed to imitate them. Yes. And I think what you're saying is so beautiful because they are watching and they do see and no one can replace mom during the day or during the weekends or at nights. And I know we all have different things that we need to be accomplishing and doing, but it is really us being there. And, and the is, kids, yeah. the things we beat ourselves up over, yeah, <laughs> they won't remember. They, for the most part, we're just too hard on ourselves. We are. We Enjoy are. the gift. Can I leave you with a scripture? Yes, please. Let's do that. Again, from yes. the Passion Translation. Mm -hmm. This is Psalm 113, verse 9. He makes them happy parents, mm. surrounded by their pride and joy, as I will be tomorrow. <laughs> That's the God we praise, so give it all to him. Let me say it again. By the way, this is our this is my these are my babies now. This <laughs> uh, That's great. <laughs> That's a year ago. They're all uh, grown up, Moira. They're, they're all grown up and they're so independent and yeah. He makes them happy parents, surrounded by their pride and joy. That's the God we praise, so give it all to Him. He will make us what we need Amen. to be. Mm -hmm. And Amen. deliver us from the things that aren't from Him at all. Yes, I agree. Thank you for all of these words of wisdom and encouragement, and I know so many will be blessed. Thank you for your time today, Moira, and I wish we could do more talking, but thank you so much for being here. <laughs> We'll have Thank coffee. You the opportunity. <laughs> oh, we will. We will. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Moira. Bye-bye. God bless you, everyone.